Hello guys and welcome back to Ally and Coco's Science Show. Where have you been? I know, I know mom, I know. I've been gone for like six weeks. Here's what happened. Uh, I was started making like goofy videos for the pandemic, science themed. Just goofy things to keep people occupied. And then Black Lives Matter picked up a lot of momentum, which it should. And I didn't want to like continue making goofy videos when they're probably better topics I could be talking about. So I scrapped like four videos that I had filmed. And so I've been spending the last six weeks kind of planning where I'd want this channel to go and what I wanted to do as well as, as you can tell from my background, moving. And Colette also feels a little under the weather. So she's just gonna chill right here, if that's cool. Where do I want my channel to go? I want to continue doing K through 12 and fun little experiments. Cause I know there's gonna be a lot of like parents and teachers that'll want that resource. So those videos will be a little shorter, but I also want to cover more in depth, bigger topics that are related to science still, but maybe our scene is more controversial. They shouldn't be, but they are. I do want to talk about things like that, like GMOs, vaccines, masks, <laughs> and also racism. So, um, there's going to be some changes as far as formatting goes. I'm going to try and keep videos short for the most part with some longer, more in-depth videos. But today I wanted to start talking about something just um, to jump us in, something summer. Pineapple. What is a pineapple, honestly? Its scientific name is Ananas camosus, and uh, it's in the bromeliad family, bromeliaceae. Bros. There are over 3,000 different species of bromeliads, and most of them are found in the Americas, as in the southern part of North America, Central America, and South America the tropics. They are monocots. Uh, and the first trait you might see for a monocot versus a eudicot is that when a monocot is germinating, when the seed is sprouting, you'll see uh, one cotyledon or like it's kind of like a baby leaf. You'll see one leaf come out instead of two. And bromeliads can be incredibly diverse. I did a video on Spanish moss Tillandsia, and they are way different from the more like terrestrial bromeliad. And I'm gonna leave a link to our Spanish moss video that we did a couple years ago in the description. So you guys should check it out because Spanish moss is super cool. Many bromeliads are epiphytes, which means that they live on other plants, but they're not parasites or parasitic in any way. They're just living on the plant and they're getting their nutrients, their water, food source, like from debris, from the air, from rain. So they're covered. They don't need to steal from any other plant, which oh, I think is totally cool. You know, another thing I think is cool because they have these rosette leaf structures. You see that? Yeah. And they can collect and pool water between all these leaves. And this water is very important because it can create a micro ecosystem. So, you know, if you're at the canopy of a rainforest, uh, bromelia could be living at the very tops of the trees and collect water, which allows for insects, microorganisms, and sometimes even things like a frog to live. So they can lay their eggs, tadpoles, can go through metamorphosis, and you can have frogs growing in this tiny ecosystem. And it is so cool, just, it's so cool to know that there are plants out there that can create their own ecosystem on themselves. Like, <laughs> it's a whole tiny ecosystem in there. Now let's talk about pineapple specifically. How did we get such a weird looking fruit? Actually, it is, it is multiple fruits. What happens is the pineapple plant will create a, an inflorescence, which is just a stalk of many flowers and each of the flowers will get pollinated. Once it's pollinated, each flower will produce an individual fruit and they will all mature into one big fruit. And these big fruits are called infructescence. Just think of it as a multiple fruit or a composite fruit, but it is technically an infructescence. Chemically, they've got something cool going on. First off, pineapple is incredibly acidic. Uh, for me, I cannot handle the acidity of pineapple. I can only eat a couple pieces. And also they have an enzyme in them called bromelian, which has actually been used to tenderize meat. That's how enzymatic it is. So you know, this enzyme also tenderizes my mouth up. Now, usually when you think of pineapple, you think of Hawaii and I, I get why, but it's a bit problematic and here's why. So 
pineapple that we eat today is actually native to South America and was enjoyed for hundreds of years by the indigenous people there. Europeans discovered the Americas, they found this pineapple, they were like, that is so delicious. And it became quite a big deal. Only wealthy people in Europe could get their hands on pineapple. When outsiders moved into Hawaii and started creating these uh, pineapple plantations in the 1800s, they did that because it did really well there. And at one point, 80% of all pineapple eaten around the world was grown in Hawaii. Now, not only did we have native Hawaiians working really hard in these fields, um, they also brought people over from Japan, China, Korea, and the Philippines to do work. We also saw a huge loss of biodiversity because we had to make way for all these plantations to come in. They did the last queen of Hawaii, Liliokalani, dirty, and I'm saying that so light right now. So in the late 1800s, before Hawaii was a state, the native people, they wanted their rights back. So they asked Queen Liliokalani to write a constitution to give, their, give them their rights back and to kind of get these colonizers, these abusers, these outsiders out. And so she wrote a constitution and the Committee of Annexation, they're just these stupid businessmen, did not like it. So they resisted her writing. They wanted to exploit Hawaii for their agricultural goods. So the queen gave up her power because she was worried. She was worried that they were going to bring their guns. She did not want her native people to be murdered. So the queen gave up her power so that they wouldn't bring any war to the islands. She was then arrested and was forced to sign away all her power. Um, but yeah, very depressing for some for some delicious fruit. And even though 80% of pineapple was coming from Hawaii at the time, now only 10% comes from Hawaii. Everything's moved overseas because it's cheaper labor. So just make sure when you get a pineapple, you try and get something as local as possible, or you at least know where that pineapple comes from. That is a story of pineapple. It's a really cool multiple fruit. It tenderizes my mouth with chemistry and uh, it has, it is not from Hawaii, it's from South America and has a really sad history with Hawaii. I do, I do like the smell though. So for the question of the week, I want to know, pineapple on pizza? Do you like it? No? Yes? I personally, I do like pineapple on pizza. So don't forget to comment down below. Do you put pineapple on your pizza? Give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new and hit that subscribe button to follow for more adventures. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again next time. Bye.